us. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to church. High five, five to 10. 15 people, welcome them to church. Make them feel welcome. Come on. This sounds a little loud. I might be a little loud. Whoa. Where'd my Bible go? Come on. We got a rowdy bunch today. Tell me if this is a Y'all ready to roll? 9 a.m.? Come on. If you haven't met, my name is Todd. It's my amazing wife, Denise. And just really glad that you guys took time in your weekend to show up, worship God. How about that new jam? When I follow Jesus. You're like, dude, stay in your lane. Stop singing. <laughs> Really grateful. Uh, any any new people, first time guests, wave at me real quick. First time guests, they're in the back, right there. What's up, right dude? Right in front, too. For, seriously? All right, front row people. Mike, can you, do you row, like coffee, first bro? First time. Do you like coffee? You do. All right, don't give it to that dude. Give it to, no. What's, what's your name, ma'am? Jean? Everybody say, what's up, Jean? Hi, Jean. Coffee on God. <laughs> Thank you guys for being our guests and front row. Mm. I love it. God's touching your soul, even like right from the jump. Isn't it cool how God works and really grateful? We're a simple church. Um, God called Denise and I years ago to leave Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Oh man. <laughs> Any Fort Lauderdale people here? <laughs> and in February of all, of all months, it was negative 20. My wife looked at me like, what have we done? But by his grace, here we are 50, over 15 years later and God continues to change lives and uh, it's powerful to be a part of what he's doing. And we're a simple church. I mean, really, we challenge you to read through the Bible every day. So someone say, study it. Study it. So we have a reading guide. We're walking through the Bible in four years. We're in year two and then we, challenge you to, to get part of a group. In two weeks, you'll have that opportunity for season three. Test one out, I promise you. And if you show up to the first one and it's not a good fit, like lovingly say, hey, I'm gonna move on to the next one. But get a part of a group where we discuss what we're reading, and then we have a team of Bible teachers that we're reading with you, and we're asking God, what's a message you wanna share with your church? So we have a team of teachers that will do our best to bring those messages. Um, and then we break the holy huddle, and what do we do? We apply it. Someone say apply it. Apply it. Right? We, we don't just read it, but by God's <clears throat> grace, asking him to flow through us to a broken world. Man, there's a lot of people hurting out there, and you're the answer. Tell your neighbor real quick. Say, you're the answer. Tell your other neighbor. Actually, Jesus is the answer. Jesus. But he's allowing you to be a part of it. So cool. And we're just having a great time in this season of life. And this is a special weekend. And I've asked my wife to really kind of take the communication from the platform this week. And she'll have a couple of friends that will come up. But the reason I wanted to be up here to share that with you, if you could take that down just a bit, I want to compete with, with that, please. That'd be great. Is Denise and I have had the privilege of being a part of a ministry called Fresh Start. One of my mentors, who's now in heaven, was my counselor for many years, faithful man of God. Him and his wife were called to start this ministry to help people deal with past offense, loss, hurt, abuse, a major pain that has caused bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, and locked people in. And so what we wanna do once a year is pause and try to do our best to help you be honest with God where you're at. And we wanna ask God to unlock hearts today. Yeah. We, we get bound in unforgiveness, but God's got something better to live free. Amen. And, um, and I, 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 it's interesting because I see my wife, the reason I asked my wife to, to lead is I see her live it, I see her lead it. She sits with many, many, uh, hundreds of people 
to help them unlock broken parts of their heart. I remember being in Africa with a huge group of college students and to see my wife counsel woman after woman, abused by, sexually abused by their fathers and different wild stuff and see the continents of these young ladies change by God through my wife. And I'm like, man, I need her to communicate it. She's running downhill. And she's looking good in blue. You're Is that funny. a silky blue jumpsuit? Ask Joel, he knows the color. He's an art what teacher, and he's like, it's do you know the royal. color? Do you know the color? And he goes, no, it's not royal. It's something crazy. No, I'm, it's, royal, it's royal blue for a royal priesthood. Oh. It's gonna bring the word. So go. give it up for my wife, Denise Doxon. <laughs> Let's go. God's so fun. Um, I think it's so humbling to, first of all, I would way rather be back there with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, because you guys sometimes are real scary, a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> Uh, but it's, so, it's such an honor and it's such a privilege to be led by Pastor Todd and Pastor Mike all the time in every way. I'm challenged by them, loved by them, called out by them, called higher by them. So can we give God praise for giving us such an amazing leadership team? Yeah, yes, it's him. But in the same way, just seeing them willing to surrender and yield in places that are tough, things behind the scenes, it's just really cool to see them grow throughout the years, and I get to uh, be alongside, and it's a privilege, and it's an honor. Today, are you willing, here's the question, are you willing to do a little heart check? Do this with me. We're gonna just see if, are we willing to open up the heart and let the great physician get inside and take a look at whether or not there's anything stored in there that would keep us from fullness? Can you say, I want the fullness of God don't you though? Do you know that sometimes I'm the one that gets in the way of the fullness of God? Do you believe that? It's so easy to get in God's way. And, and part of what we want to look at today is when things happen out there in the world, because you know, we live in a sin-saturated world, God designed and desired for us to have unity with him like in the Garden of Eden and sin happened and sin separated all of humanity from a holy, perfect God. And we'll learn later how Jesus bridges the gap and because of Jesus, now we have a way back to fellowship with him, but we get to choose Jesus all day, every day. That's why they call that song, The Jesus Way. In my own strength, in my own competence, out of my own experience and the system of belief I've built up over the years because of how I was raised and what has happened to me, it falls short of answering and responding right. Can you understand? Yeah. Do you relate the same way? And so today we wanna take a look at the heart. Are there ways that I respond that aren't from God? Are there things that I do that I do because I've always done and I really don't care to do it God's way, I wanna do it my way. And so, Father, we come to you, I wanna just, I know that it's really, a, it's really just a prophetic act to put your hands out like this, so I wanna ask that you would just put your hands in a posture of receiving, because here's the deal, if we're willing, God can do miracles in our heart, not just today, but every day. And so when we're putting our hands in a posture like this, we're humbling ourselves before him. And so, Father, we come to you knowing that we do not have all the answers. You are our answer. Would you reveal it in the place that we have need today? You know every heart here, every trial, every tribulation, every story, every place that they've gone in their mind this week and their entire life. You know what thought processes are leading them to a jail cell? You know what thought processes are leading them to life? And so God, we wanna give you our thought processes and we just say, God, clean them out. Yeah. I joke around with our kids and it's like, it's like you're saying, take the comb and get the lice out of my hair. Like take the junk out of my heart. And so we just submit to you, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would have your way. In your name, Jesus, amen. I know I will forget, so I'm doing this first. 
I uh, have a team of wonderful humans that sit one-on-one -on -one with people for Fresh Start, that do small groups for Fresh Start, where we do take care of our hearts together. And they're going to throw up a QR code of how to, if you'd like to, grab that to now and later on. So I'm telling you now, you can get with people who love Jesus and meet with them one-on-one -on -one and in small groups so that you can grow and learn how to be with Jesus moment to moment. So I thought I could kick us off. You guys are in the reading guide with us, yeah? So what book are we in right now? Jeremiah, Jeremiah the poor guy. Seriously, you guys, 52 chapters and nobody repents. I don't know, I don't know what I would do. I think I would give up. He just keeps going and he walks in obedience, no matter what the world around him is doing. And I'm really challenged when I read the book of Jeremiah. I am like again and again and again. And it's really like such a little picture of our own hearts. Again and again and again, we disobey. We plug our ears to God and we won't repent. We won't turn away from our sin and back to God. We won't turn away from our laziness and back to God. We won't turn to the better way instead our way. And so he's so long suffering, both God and Jeremiah, God, 490 years he gave Israel, the, the southern kingdom of Judah, to turn. And now he's sending Jeremiah and saying, too bad, too late, we're taking you captive to the land of Babylon, which really means confusion, like the Tower of Babel. We're gonna take you there. And I love the, the words that they use. It says, he sent them away captive. And so Jeremiah's here telling them, you're gonna be sent away, but if you do this, this is really the consequence of your own sin. Would you walk in obedience? They had a choice. And as they sent, God, I love that word, just the word, even the word sent means to be sent away as an exile, away from home so that they might hear the voice of God. God is so specific. He wants to go every length to get your attention and to get my attention. How many of you have been hurt in this world and because of that situation, because of that hurt, because of that loss, because of that pain, because of that betrayal, because of their judgment, you may have put up a little bit of a wall. Have you been there? It might be a wall with just that person, or it might be walls, very thick, like the one in China, thick, the Great Wall, dividing us from the fullness of the Most High God. He desires for us to live free no matter who we're around. So I'm gonna share a story and I'm a little bit embarrassed, I'm a little bit scared, I'm a little bit not know how to respond, I'm scared how you're gonna respond, so I'm just gonna preview it with, take it lightly, okay? So you might fire me. Um, we were downtown this week celebrating because we had friends who went all out and got engaged, praise God. And we were so elated, so overwhelmed, so in the moment that we were just walking along, so excited to go see some new stuff down there. And as we were walking, I'm gonna say this right because last night I got in trouble for saying it wrong. <laughs> We were walking, and from out from behind me, some man comes, slides his hand up my body, and grabs my breast. I said a wrong word yesterday. Literally, while we're walking downtown. And we're just like in one, one moment of emotion. Elation, celebration, God's so cool. Marriage is ordained by God, this is so awesome. We're taking photos, and then this thing happens. And I whip my arm back, smack like the elbow into the guy, and scream, what the H-E double hockey sticks are you doing? <laughs> I told you you're gonna fire me. <laughs> <laughs> that came out of my mouth when I told my husband the story, who was just about 50 yards away and didn't see any of this. He's like, I've never heard you say that in my whole life. And out of my flesh, there was this response that I did not know where it came from. And in that moment, rage came over me. My, I was, my blood was boiling. I wanted to lunge and fight, and that's exactly what I went for. I went to lunge at the guy. Thank God for a sound mind in the moment. Friend of mine goes, whoa, bro, step away, we're fine. Get away, go, go. And he steps in between, 
And then God allows me to come to and realize I'm in my flesh. I look at this young, broken, lost boy who has a tattoo of a life taken on his face, and I just see he's completely wasted. So lost, so broken, lost the life of someone he probably knows loves by some sort of murder, is what that symbol was on his face, and God writes my attention and says, he doesn't know me. He was coming and lunging back, because I was lunging forward, he was lunging at, and when God got my attention, he said, speak my name, and so I just said, Jesus loves you, he has a plan for you, it's so much better than where you're at, Jesus loves you, God has a plan for you, and then he kind of like cowers in his countenance, and like walks away, and then my husband comes up, and then it's, again, somebody just got engaged, so I'm like shaking and trembling and boiling over, but then I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and to my husband, I'm like, it's no big deal, it's fine, it's fine, let's not ruin their night, this is their big night, this is not how they should remember this, and so like we move it along, but there's this stuff going on in my heart, there's this rage that came up from a pit from somewhere, and I couldn't quite recall or understand why it was so strong. Yeah, that moment was violating. I was repulsed. I felt like, who, who do you think you are? That's so wrong. Why would you do such a thing? And I was reminded of the text that we were in a couple of weeks ago in Jeremiah. And I just wanna share a little bit what he says. Jeremiah 17, we're gonna start in verse one. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with the point of a diamond engraved on the tablet of the heart and the horns of the altar. The question for me in that moment was, was I willing to recognize I was also sinning against God? Yeah, sure, the guy was controlled by an evil spirit in that moment, but my response is my responsibility. How hard is that in a justified moment? So easily, I could have punched him in the face. I'm sure with all this, he probably was carrying something. I could have been dead. Your pastor could be in jail right now. All these things could have gone wrong. <laughs> but thank the Lord Jesus for like his spirit coming over me in that moment. But what I felt was the sin, like Judah, a pen engraved on my heart. I had to be willing to acknowledge this stuff that came from somewhere. And I was the next day reminded of a story. When I was younger, molested several times from different people. And what that guy did to me brought me right back there in my emotion, in the parts of my heart that remember. Do I have a new heart? Heck yeah, when Jesus died on the cross and I said yes to him as savior, he took out my stony, stubborn heart and your stony, stubborn heart and he put in a new heart. But my flesh is still here. And it still has a tendency to respond and I have to war and choose the kingdom of God, the spirit of God in the moment, moment to moment, and so do you. The Jesus way is not a joke. It's for real, y'all. We can choose day to day, moment to moment, to go in the opposite spirit, to acknowledge my own sin and to be set free. If I've been forgiven much, I learn how to love much. Even those that are walking in darkness. Let me continue in this text. I'm gonna drop down to verse five. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes, what? Say this with me. Flesh, his strength. Whose heart, in that moment, what did my heart do? Departs from the Lord. Was my response something that Jesus would respond like? No. I was trusting my flesh in that moment. My heart departed from the Lord and my response looked just like the flesh. It didn't look like Jesus. Isaiah 55 always says that, like my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, your flesh feels justified, but that's not my way. Verse six, Jeremiah 17 says this, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited if you trust in the flesh. There's your promise. Yeah. 
But check this out. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. The man who trusts in the Lord knows Jesus is enough. He will see me through. He has an answer. As I seek him, he'll give it to me. Verse eight, he shall be like a tree <clears throat> planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Do you see all those promises attached to that action? One, cursed is the man. The other, blessed is the man, promised to be planted and anchored in truth, not lies, strong and vitalized by the river, which is the word of God, having no anxiety, not being led by that emotion, yielding fruit, good fruit. And let's check out what can happen, though, like you saw in my illustration. Verse nine, the heart is above That's really hard to see. We trick ourselves. We think that it's okay. We think that our response is justified. We believe that our behavior is fine. But the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That word for heart is your seat of attitude, emotion, and will. It's a choice. I can't even trust my own self, right? Like in that response, I could have in my mind and in my heart said, I'm fine, I'm justified, my action's good. And then verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. I just wanna submit to you a couple of things. As we respond, sometimes to certain circumstances, we have a couple ways that we respond. Right, And I want you to think about what's your go-to response? What's your go-to response? Mine there with that situation was anger. But if you talk to me about someone about to reject me or if I feel some sort of abandonment come, it's run and protect myself. Completely opposite of the other situation. So I'm gonna ask you what yours is. What's interesting, we've all learned through our life experience to respond in certain ways, whether it was our upbringing or things that have happened, that now we've built this system of belief, if you will, or this religion, this way we do life. And it's not God's way, right? And we choose to either go with him and surrender in the moment. It's a choice, moment to moment. Say it with me, I have a choice. choice. Moment to moment, moment to be free in him or bound in me. And you saw the heart is wicked and deceitful above all else. Who can know it? Check out this verse that every heart ministry usually starts their little conference off with. It says this. Do this with me. If you're a kindergarten teacher, you're going to love it. Guard your heart, Guard your heart. Above, all else. above all else. For out of it spring the issues of life. It will determine... The way that you speak, the way that you you see, see. and the things that you do. How about that? Guard your heart above all else. That just says our heart is the wicked and deceitful. Above all else. Do you see how he's combating one with the other? What does he mean by guard? When I do this, it might give you the wrong impression. What does it mean? What do you feel like you hear when you hear the word guard? Yeah. Yeah. And really what God's inviting us to do is tend to it. Garden our heart. Pull the weeds out, right? Like, I don't know about you, but when I go pull my weeds, I wanna get them when they first sprout because they're so easy, I could do it with two fingers. Two fingers. That's why we say moment to moment. That's the two finger pull. But when it's over time, there was one time we were pulling weeds out of Osi's yard and literally we put the Jeep and tied the Jeep to the weed and it wouldn't come out. It was so thick because it had been there for so long. What's in your heart that's been there for so long that now it's veering you off God's course? If we take care of it moment to moment, something refreshing happens. Forgiveness comes, freedom comes, relational equity continues. But instead, we let it grow and we become bitter and we don't forgive 
and we come, become angry and snappy. Yeah. Have you ever been snappy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we talk about ways that we've been triggered. So we go into a place or we see a person and suddenly you feel something. Do you know? Yeah. Been there? With who? <laughs> For real. God knows. God knows what's in your heart when you see that person. God knows your judgment against that person. God knows your assumption with that person. God knows whether or not you're seeing that person with eyes of destiny the way he created them to be the lost gang member that clearly was wasted. God had me praying for him on the way home. He wants to do that if we're willing, moment to moment to moment. So when he says, guard your heart above all else, it's just being available. It's just being teachable. It's just being willing when his spirit is bringing conviction. Mm, mm -mm. That was a wrong response. Go back, apologize. Mm -mm. Don't let it sit. The longer it sits, the worse it. Mm. So tricky, right? Jeremiah had this opportunity with these people and they were unwilling and the consequence was grave. I would rather have a tiny consequence. How about you? Wouldn't you rather just feel uncomfortable and ask for forgiveness than it end up decades later in divorce? The faster that we go to the Lord in that moment, the faster he gives us his will, his words, his way, his understanding, his eyes of destiny. And so I want you to say with me three words. Say acknowledge. Acknowledge. What I mean by that is I'm willing to acknowledge my sin against that young boy. Take it to the Lord and ask. The next word is ask for forgiveness. First and foremost, for my sin against God. Why? Because it wasn't a pure representation to my friends or to the person of what God would have responded like. So first I have to acknowledge my sin against God. Why? Because I'm his bride and you're his bride and you have the choice to walk with him moment to moment and represent him or misrepresent him and the people in the space never taste God today. Do you know that your job and my job, when we receive the love of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus is now to go and give it away? So when they see broken, battered, bruised, overwhelmed, depressed, anxious, rude, not joyfully passionate and excited about what God did for me, it shifts the room, right? Nobody loves the Eeyore Christian. Woe is me, my life stinks. And we only are there if we let the weight of the world linger in our hearts. I love Hebrews 12 too. It says, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let's throw off the weight that's so easily, the weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. I love the word easily. It says it easily ensnares us. We can throw it off. Just throw it off. Yet, It owns us and we become who we're not. Do you know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy? His job in his kingdom is to stop you from experiencing God and to stop you from letting God flow through you to other people. If that's his job, our job is to recognize when he's trying and be willing to say, "Uh uh-uh, You're not stealing, Uh uh-uh. I wanna live in his kingdom today. Don't you remember when Jesus prayed and he was teaching the disciples to pray, that's you and me? He said, your kingdom come to God, to the Father. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Say it with me. On earth. Do you know that you can have a heavenly day as we pray it in and we remain one with God, we can access and appropriate, is the next word, access and appropriate his power to overcome the weirdness. 
the stuff going on in the world around us, the weird things we see in social media and in the world, we don't have to be defined by it. We don't have to live like it. We can go in the opposite spirit. We can become the children of God that he designed us to be, access and appropriate his power, gain his perspective, walk in newness of life, express to people who they really are, see them with eyes of destiny instead of what they're doing speak over who they are that's your job if we're not walking there we're missing the fullness that God has for us it's so easy to get caught up and I've done it my whole life and I'm passionate about it because I have been bound in so many ways by so many different circumstances I'm going to call my chain gang friends up here to help illustrate what I mean by that and I'm illustrating this simply because It will help us recognize when we're not operating out of his presence. And so in my life, I'll just give a couple examples. Each of these people are gonna represent former circumstances or situations that I had gone through, that I had the opportunity to either say yes to God and be blessed, or yes to the flesh and be what? Cursed. All I had to do in these circumstances was acknowledge, say it with me, acknowledge, ask, access, say with me, access Access and appropriate his power instead of my own thinking, my own way, my own normal response. And so the first one I'm going to just chat through, this is Capus, the Mathis. I don't know why I have to say it like that every time. He's awesome. Okay, so he's going to represent when I was adopted. This spirit of rejection and abandonment I began to agree with because there was this lack of identity because my parents didn't want me. God must not and nobody else probably doesn't either. This came over me out. I would say that I I probably didn't recognize it till I was about 21 to 24 years old, but all that whole time I was operating out of no identity at all. Before Christ, you have none anyway, but I was literally operating out of rejection and abandonment. So everything that happened, anyone that would come near in such a way or act in such a way that I felt one teensy little bit of rejection, meaning super silly things like not being included or no eye contact or not responding to a question, just things that are so dumb. It would take me back to, they don't love you, just like them. They have nothing for you. And so he's going to represent me being chained by the lies of the enemy and the pit of being bound in my thoughts and agreeing with the spirit of rejection and abandonment. And then I have Sarah, who is going to represent my old school BFFs. And so, best friends from the past. (laughs) who were really great, and one, I was dating a boy, and one decided to convince the other best friend that she should, ha- she should convince the guy to cheat on me with the other one. They were really great friends. <laughs> but the crazy thing is that put in my spirit mistrust. No woman can be trusted. No girl friends are real. And I was bound by and in this little corner of not trusting women. And there's a lot of women out there, y'all. And you just go into this space of vain imagination of what they could be conjuring up behind your back, right? And this one, I'm actually gonna allow to represent because she's the one that got engaged. I'm gonna, uh, (laughs) Uh, I'm gonna have her represent the guy downtown who really brought up a root in my heart of not fully processing and forgiving for the effects of those people who molested me in the past. He just was a little trigger and pulled on this little trigger. And I didn't tell you, but the next day, I was grocery shopping in this, putting my cart, maybe five to 10 cars, all the way away from that little cart return thing. You guys do that, right? You all put the cart away, no matter how far you are, because you're from Love Church and you're awesome. I was putting the cart away just the next day after that incident at downtown. And this guy just says to his young daughter, maybe 14, says, because she's probably going to be driving soon, oh, that's a quality human, putting the cart away. And in my spirit rose up like, why are you talking to me? Like, no men can be trusted. You know, in my heart. 
the next day. Innocently, just saying that's a good human. But in my spirit rose up this response that was not from God. I get in the car and I'm like, "Ah, why do I feel like that? Ew, oh my goodness, God, please forgive me. Where did that come from? And he revealed, and after talking to my husband later that evening, he revealed, you have stuff to process still. That situation certainly was a trigger in the, the day before, but now the next day in the parking lot at the grocery store, this is a tip off, meaning that response does not equate to what actually just happened. That's a tip off that you have something in your heart that needs to be taken care of. The question is, will I do the heart check and give my response to the Lord? So then this last one, I think I'm messing these up, guys, sorry. They're supposed to be in an order. Okay, you're good. This last one I'm gonna just, um, back in the past when I was learning to write and wanting to publish, I had this column that I wrote in the, uh, editor was like, you're not good enough. There's no way you're gonna be for this, call, whatever, this magazine. And I was like, okay, fine, no big deal. I'll just keep doing my thing. But really, it was a you're not good enough, kind of from the spirit of rejection, right? But really, if I was submitted to the Lord, I could take good coaching and I can say, Oh my goodness, praise God for a good coach. They want to teach me. They want me to learn how to be empowered. They want to teach me better grammar, like whatever it was in the moment. If in that moment I would have known, because the tools of God's kingdom are right there for us to take, confessing what I felt like to the Lord in that moment, I would have been able to let go, and I'll go yours first, yeah, and that chain can no longer have any effect or weight on me. Moment to moment, if I would have known, I wouldn't have had any power over me. And then second, with that guy in this circumstance, back in the day, if I would have known, now I do, but if I would have known how to process the issues when I had been molested, going to somebody and actually walking through, handing that to the Lord, I had no idea. I hid it, I stuffed it, and out of it came all of this stuff instead. Finally getting to the place of asking God for forgiveness from running and burying and probably being thrown off course for a lot of years, and instead, going to him, getting the power from God, because if the forgiver lives in me, now I have the power to forgive. So as I said yes to him as savior, the power is there, I just have to access it. So he taught me how to access and appropriate and forgive. So when the enemy wants to use that old, he has old, the same tricks. So he goes, oh, remember that one, rejection, remember that one, she was sexually molested, let me pull that root. I'm gonna pull on that heart string. I have to be, aware enough to know his tactics never change, and he has a plan to take me out. Oh, I see what you're doing here. God, you want me to see the guy with eyes of destiny. You want me to pray for him and his family so that his life doesn't go in that direction. Instead of hide the church, hiding the bride, hiding behind the walls of pain and hurt and loss and being ineffective for the kingdom. There could have been an opportunity. We missed it because I was so caught up. Was it validated? Sure. But if I would have responded in the spirit quicker and confessed, I would have been able to let go and be free. BFS, just so that you know, we've forgiven. And there's such great, great intimacy. And God's given the opportunity to speak life and share the gospel and spend time with and see them from a different perspective, his perspective, broken girls falling into places of jealousy and insecurity and not wanting the friendship to be derailed. So they just try to take the boy away. And God gave me the ability to step back and forgive, let go and see them from God's perspective instead of my own. So not bound by that anymore. And then finally, this one is a long one. It's been there my whole life, and I didn't know it for a lot of years, and so it rears its ugly head in weird ways, and so when it comes up, I have to pray, and I have to really ask God to give me an awareness, a supernatural awareness, when the enemy's trying, and so I'm not bound by that thing when it comes, and so when he does bring it up, it's now like a a game with the Lord, and I get a laugh, and like, oh, I see, he's trying to rear his head with that person or with this person, and now it's just like, okay, we win, because I'm not a victim, I'm victorious in God, amen? Thank you for your heart, Sarah. We all have the choice. We can be a victim or we can be victorious. 
All day, every day. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. We get to choose. We don't have to live bound by anger, frustration, greed, bitterness, unforgiveness. And it, it's so hard because a lot of times we want to point and blame shift, but really, it's my issue. I was the one hanging on to all those things. Yes, people do wrong things all the time. Nobody's justifying anything. All wrong behavior will be judged either on the cross of Jesus Christ or on the day that he calls us home or someone goes to hell. Every wrong behavior against you will be handled by God. He is your avenger. I don't have to worry. I don't have to avenge. I don't have to make sure I get the last word. Do you know how hard that is to do in the moment? So easy to speak it. So easy to speak it, so hard to do. And so I asked my friend who, we learn how to do fresh start moment to moment. You just start processing it out loud quick. Well, when you are in a circumstance that's traumatic and long, it takes a little bit of time. Like it's not gonna happen. If this happened 25 years ago and this thing has been basically haunting you for 25 years, it takes time to break those chains. And God's gonna set you up to do that because his power in you is greater than the power in this world, amen? But there's things that happen every day, little things. And so Sarah Brown had a little thing this week and we thought, hey, this is so easy. We just did this in four minutes. Can we just display this out loud so you can see what Fresh Start looks like out loud? Does that sound good? Because the spirit in you, remember that, is greater than the spirit in this world. When we ask him, he'll do it. Okay, Sarah, you ready? Okay. So we were in our normal sync weekly meeting and suddenly your countenance changes. Tell me what happened. I had um, received a text. My phone was sitting on the table and um, I looked and I, a text from a friend about a situation earlier in the week where um, she was sitting with a group of women, acquaintances, and they were talking trash about me, speaking poorly about me, uh, attacking my character. Working on a project with these women, they said that I wasn't owning up to my end of the bargain, that I was not putting enough time and energy into what they perceived, um, that I was just not doing enough. And I was... I wish I could define for you all the things she's doing. I'm over here like... <sighs> like, do you see, like, I can take up an offense for my friend? It's really easy to want to take up an offense for. Because I'm like, let me, as soon as she said, I'm like, let me at them. Where are they? <laughs> and then humble Jesus comes in my heart and goes, that's not the response. <laughs> I didn't say it to her out loud, but I was thinking it. And so then I said, I just want to go into where, where we went next. I, you, let this moment happen. Right? There's emotion, there's some things that happen in that moment. And as I was listening, I asked her, can you tell me, well, t what do we do next? Did, can, we t can you tell me where, oh, I wanna see, you were triggered. Oh, here, here, here. I listened to the story and then I had the opportunity to ask the question that I told you guys earlier. Okay, Sarah, you define things that you felt like in that moment. Anger. I was angry at the women because who are they? They don't know me. They don't know my character. I was frustrated because they don't see the time I'm putting in behind the scenes. They don't know what I'm doing that they're not witnessing. And really insecure because I am a people pleaser and I really don't like it when people don't like me or that they are angry at me or upset with something um, that I've done. And I just don't want people to feel that way about me. So all this happened, and then I said, do you have a normal tendency when these things happen? What did you say? Yes, isolate. I tend to want to run. Um, I don't want to see the people. I'm not going to let them hurt me again, so I'm going to not be around them. I'm not going to go to the thing that we're doing, and I'm just going to say, nope, not going to see you. Have you been there? It's not easy, right? And then there was a moment where I was like, okay, you just poured out your heart to the Lord. And you said you were frustrated, you were angry, you felt insecure, and your desire was to isolate. And then the heart was like, okay, here's an alignment opportunity with God. God's way is this way. And every one of those things, hurt, anger, frustration, 
insecurity, isolation, they take us off God's perfect plan, right? Is it justified? But as we go with those emotions, they take us off the Jesus way. They take us off course. And so it's a choice, and I asked her, I said, Sarah Brown, you have a choice right now, because I told her that little illustration. You can either choose to get realigned or remain where you are. What would you prefer? I'd prefer to walk the way God had, would have me walk. Yeah, and even, and I said, do you mind praying for her? And I said, yes. Okay, so she prayed for the woman first, and all of a sudden, she recognized her sin because we were speaking it out loud. I gave the illustration and she saw it even further. She was able to pray for the woman and women, and as she did, her spirit shifted back. She was no longer like sad and frustrated. This thing came over her, and I, <clears throat> I asked um, after she said, you know, you, you went all that way, and then I was like, I think I wanna pray for you, meaning to forgive, and God prompted me. He's like, uh-uh. That's her job. Sometimes we like want to get in the way of God and the person because, you know, you, whatever the reason is, especially moms and their kids or dads and their kids, here's the thing. God wanted her. It was her issue. So God wanted her to have that moment. And so I asked, do you feel ready to forgive? Yes. Do you want to pray it and also cancel their debt against you? Yes. So I'm kind of combining all of it into one. So pray your confession yep. of your emotion your confession of wanting to run to isolation and then also pray yourself back. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, Lord, um, forgive me um, for stepping out of alignment with you. Forgive me for choosing anger and frustration, um, isolation. Forgive me for um, not walking your path for my day. I give you all these emotions. I lay them at the foot of the cross. I know that you're gonna take them and replace them with joy. You're gonna replace them with peace, you're gonna give me confidence that I can walk in and see these women again and have joy in my heart for them, yeah. that I can love them with your heart, even though I don't feel it right now, Lord. Give me your eyes of destiny Amen. for the women. Give me your heart to love them. I wanna do what's your path for my life. I wanna give you what my you day, choose? and I wanna give you and choose to walk. Amen. In Jesus' name. So there's a choice. I choose to forgive, and I cancel their debt. They owe me nothing. Right? God's my avenger. He handles all wrong behavior. I'm not the handler of wrong behavior against me or anyone. And so we learn to submit and what happens? What happened in your, your countenance? What happened in your spirit? How did you feel after? Free, humble, free. So I asked her, what did you feel like before? And she said? Frustrated and angry. And then during? Convicted. Yeah. She said earlier, convicted and humbled. And then after, free. light, free, totally different. And then what happened a couple days later? So after this all happened, and then I freed myself, I gave all the frustration and anger, and I gave it to the Lord, and he healed me. Then a couple days later, we got to walk into a situation, and I saw the women, and it wasn't a problem. It wasn't a deal, and I was free to love them and them to love me. So yeah, yeah. And, and she, I mean, just imagine if she didn't guard her heart above all else, she would go in with, <laughs> with an attitude, maybe judgment, right? So it's just an opportunity. Y'all, this is moment to moment stuff. It's not something that it has to be this massive thing. It's just keeping your heart and your mind in line with him, amen? I love it. What if you weren't willing to forgive? Because sometimes it's hard, because that thing really hurt. It's a sticking point, and it hurt, and it's over and over, and they keep doing it. Then what? Continue to pray. Ask the Lord to give me the power to forgive. Yeah, because if you've said yes to Jesus as Savior, he lives in you. And if he lives in you, the forgiver lives in you, he can train you and teach you to forgive moment to moment. If the lover lives in you who is un, his love is different than man's. We have this love that's only in our flesh, Storge, Fleo, and Eros, those loves, they only go this far. But agape love is unconditional. Based on how he determined for their life to walk, not based on how I had an experience with them. Amen? Yeah, Sarah Brown, thank you for helping. Can you give her a hand?
I'm going to review, if you would, with me. Just say the word, acknowledge. acknowledge. My sin against God, my sin against man, and their sin against me. If I'm willing, it's really, truly a prayer of repentance, right? All of these heart ministries are teaching you to pray day to day. The next is ask. Say it with me. Ask, ask for revelation of your offensiveness to God. How are you offensive to God in your response? Own it just like she did. Ask for forgiveness for that offense and then also ask for the power to forgive. If it hurts still, keep asking for the power to forgive. He wants to realign you and take all of those hurts and pains, put them on the cross. Do you know that the cross is what paid for every offense against you and me? And it paid for our offenses to others. Aren't you glad that he pays for our offenses to others, y'all? And then finally, say this with me, access. So access and appropriate the power of the Spirit. Here's where we talk about being baptized in the Spirit. We, we, we make it like, it, the word baptism might sound like this crazy thing, but it's really just praying yourself back into alignment. I wanna be one with you. I want your Spirit to move through me. I want your love to move through me. I want your forgiveness to move through me. I want your eyes of destiny. I want your understanding. I wanna know how you would respond. I wanna have your direction. That's baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're one with the Father by choice. He's in you. He desires to flow out of you, but we get to choose. And then he gives us it's believing Jesus paid for all of this stuff, right? And then he gives us his perspective. He lets us walk in his authority. Did you see the freeness that she had then going in that group to the women? He helps us then to carry his presence and respond with his response. So my question to you in your heart check today, what is your response? Are you willing to ask God to respond through you? Yes? Okay, I'm gonna have you stand. Capus, if you wouldn't mind coming up. I'm gonna ask Pastor Cap to come up and I'm gonna pray. And I want you to pay attention. I know it's easy when we stand and move around to not pay attention, but I wanna hone in on this thought. Two things. If you've never said yes to Jesus as Savior, we can't do what I just described. Because if he's not living in me, I can only go so far in my own strength. You saw what it looked like without him. It's ugly. And so... We're just gonna have a moment where you can respond to his invitation of forgiveness for anything that you've ever done, anywhere that you've ever gone, any place that you've ever been, knowing that he was sent from heaven by God to earth. He lived an absolute, sinless, perfect life. He died on the cross to pay for the penalty of my judgment against that young boy downtown. He also died on the cross to pay for every heinous sin that I've ever committed in my past, in my present, and in my future. How about you? Are you so glad that he died to do that? Yeah. He gives you the opportunity today, if you've never said yes to him as Savior, to just say yes. This altar, when we do an altar call, it's really just a simple place of surrender. Yeah. I want what you want for my life. And honestly, if we're not responding like regularly, we're probably needing a shakeup. And so just think on this. God sent his son to save you. He died after never sinning because he knew we sinned and somebody had to pay for it. Hebrews tells us, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Some people ask, why did he have to die? We would never live if he didn't die. Is that fascinating? So I wanna just challenge you. If you've never said yes to him as savior, make today your day and be willing to respond to his invitation. So that's first. We'll call you in just a minute. I'm gonna read a verse over you and invite you forward. And I'm gonna ask you to step out in faith and not care about the people's faces. Because here's the deal. You're gonna stand before God one-on-one -on -one when you die. Just you and him. And he's gonna ask what you did with his son. And you're gonna get to say, I responded. I responded, I said yes to him. Matter of fact, he was living his life through me all of my days after I responded. And I can't believe the journey you let us go on together. That's what he has for you. 
So that's the invitation for you. But then also, some of you in here, you know you're saved. You've already said yes to Jesus as Savior. But there's things in your life, there's patterns, there's sin habits, there's things that you wanna break off. Say that with me, break off. And so I wrote down this huge list, maybe, can you find it, you found it? Um, This huge list of generational sins that we kind of experience or sin patterns we have chosen but we're stuck. Yes, we're saved, but we're stuck and we wanna be set free from. And so I asked our pastor, Kappas, to speak life over you through these, to call some of these family generational curses out, to call some of these sin patterns out. And if it's you, I'm gonna ask you boldly to come forward. Please don't hesitate. If you wanna break off the enemy's tactics of holding you back in a chain, just walk, just walk, and just say, this is all this is, This altar is nothing special except for a point of faith. I desire what you desire. It's all it is. So don't worry about what anybody else is doing with all your heads closed, eyes closed and heads bowed. Pastor's gonna read to us some things. If you have something you'd like to share, I would love for you to share. Sure. I want, you to, uh, I want you to close your eyes. I want you just to ask the Holy Spirit personally to reveal anything in your heart that's keeping you bound. Because there's so, there can be so many layers to this, as Denise was sharing her story of her past. And I'll tell you, as a man, sometimes this is the most difficult thing for me to confront face to face with what's really in the depth of my heart. But I just believe right now that if we go through this together, that there's gonna be some serious deliverance, there's gonna be healing, yeah. there's gonna be breakthrough, chains are gonna be broken for so many. And there's things that you're carrying that you don't even know why you're carrying it. And that comes back to the generational thing. Sometimes we inherit things that we've never asked for. We inherit anger, we inherit bitterness, we inherit addiction, we inherit depression. But let me tell you that Jesus paid a high price to give you a different inheritance today. And so as we go through this, I know if there's anything in you, if you wanna come forward, respond right now. I just want you to come forward and receive this. If God is just placing it on your heart, come on, don't hesitate. If there's anybody in here that's just like, yeah, I'm being bound, I'm being tormented by some stuff right now, and I really want freedom. I wanna charge the men especially in here. If there's any men, come on, praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, God. Praise God. Praise God. I want to also engage the body where you stand, because as we read this, <laughs> Holy Spirit's going to reveal some things. Because yeah. He wants us free. Yeah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Yeah. So Amen. Holy Spirit, we ask right now, I want you to agree with me where you are. Hold your hands to heaven where you right, yes, are right now. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would refresh us, that you would baptize us right now. Immerse us in your power, immerse us in your love, immerse us in your freedom. Right now, we come against bitterness in the name of Jesus. We reject and renounce all forgiveness right now. If that's something for you, I want you to repeat these words after me. We come against a spirit of rage in the name of Jesus. We come against anger. We renounce and ask for all forgiveness from all control in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for forgiveness for comparison, and we break all agreements with that right now. All jealousy, all anxiety, all fear, in the name of Jesus, spirit of fear, we renounce you, we reject you, and we cast you out in Jesus' name. We renounce all agreements with doubt and unbelief. Insecurity, depression dies today in Jesus' name. Suicidal thoughts, Die today in Jesus' name. You are not welcome. Your time is up. Leave now in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for forgiveness for all passivity. Every passive father in the house today, we repent and we return to you. We ask for forgiveness and reject all apathy, all ignorance, all complacency, all indifference in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you give us your eyes to see what you see and to care about what you care about. We reject neglect in the name of Jesus and we receive our acceptance that we are adopted and beloved in Jesus' name. We reject entitlement, blame shifting, 
victimization. Father, we thank you that we are more than conquerors through you who love us. We reject criticism, self-criticism, judgment, and persecution in the name of Jesus. This is going to hit some people right now. We come against perfectionism. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you are the perfect one, and the perfect one lives in us. Thank you, Lord. We come against and renounce people-pleasing, for if we please people, we are no longer a servant of Christ. We reject the religious spirit in Jesus' name. We reject and renounce all occultic involvement, every addiction, all lust, all perversion, all pornography, all immorality, all infidelity, all abortion, all murderous thoughts, all stealing, lying, selfish ambition, ill-motivated thoughts, and an evil thought life in the name of Jesus. Father, right now we ask for a fresh baptism over your people. Renew their minds in Jesus' name. I pray over every person right now, the royal turban of the royal, of the royal priesthood in the name of Jesus. Renew every thought right now. We tear down every stronghold, keeping your people captive in Jesus' name. Fill them with power. Fill them with peace. Fill them, Lord. Fill them to overflowing right now. Pray right now, even from where you stand. Just pray right now. God, thank you, Jesus. This is a poignant moment between you and your Father. Surrender. If anything he spoke over you, over your family, if you're standing in the gap for, just lift your arms and just say, we surrender. We surrender it to you, God. We want your freedom. We say yes and amen to your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven through every single person in this space, God. Would they walk fully transformed and in your authority today and every day, God? Would there be a, a new pattern of thinking, a new pattern of loving, a new pattern of living free from bondage? In Jesus' name. And all of God's beautiful people said, amen. We love you, we're so thankful for you. Guys, can we praise God for D-Money?